Another question in our Beyond Doubt series, one that affects many, many people all over the world. Can good works get me to heaven? Can good works get me to heaven? Of the 11 major religions in the world, 10 of them say, yes you can. Make merit by doing this, that or something else and you'll be able to find that eventually you'll get to heaven, to paradise, to merge with the universe, to nirvana or whatever they might call it. It's a merit-making system. It's a good works system. It's interesting that Christianity is the only one out of those 11 major religions that says, no, you cannot get to heaven by good works. And that cuts right across the thinking of many people. Perhaps some of you here have thought that good works will get you to heaven. Well, we'll have a look at that question and see what we can find out. First thing to do, of course, is to look at the Bible. In Titus chapter 3, it talks about good works. It tells us that we should be ready to do whatever is good. God wants people who are following Jesus Christ to do good works. That's for sure. But we do the good works because we love Christ, because we want to serve him, because we want to make this world a better place. Not to get our salvation. That's a gift of God. The Bible says it's a free gift that comes from Jesus Christ. In fact, in Titus here, chapter 3, verse 4, it says, But when the kindness and love of God our Saviour appeared, he saved us not because of righteous things which we had done, but because of his mercy. Then later on it talks about those that are Christians being careful to devote themselves to doing what is good. So God is interested in good works. But he's not interested in your good works to get salvation. That's completely different from what we're talking about tonight. We are talking about how you get salvation. And Christianity says it is not through your good works. The other major religions state, yes, you can through a various different ways. So let's have a look at some of the things that we could be thinking about if we follow different religions. Various alternatives. The five pillars of the Islamic faith we could take as our alternative. That's going to be the way of salvation I'm going to choose. The good works of Islam, I'm going to follow that and that's going to get me to heaven. Or I might say, well, no, I prefer the Ten Commandments of the Jews. I'm going to follow those and I'm going to get to heaven that way. Or I might choose another faith and their particular pathway. All different, all saying they're the only way. And as we've mentioned before, they can't all be right. They can all be wrong or one of them can be right. And it's interesting that Christianity is the only one of those 11 major religions that says, no, that's not the right way. Doing something for God, making merit, doing good works to get to heaven is not the way of salvation. Neither is doing good to your neighbour and your friends. In other words, keeping the golden rule. People say, well, if you keep the golden rule, then you'll get to heaven. Who says so? The Bible certainly does not say that. It says not by works of righteousness that we've done, but according to God's mercy, he's saved us. That's why I've got the cross here on the board. That's so important. Another thing that you'll notice if you follow a good work system of salvation is that you never know when you've done enough to make it. Now, Adolf Hitler, is he saved? Well, that's an easy one, isn't it? For most of us to say, well, no chance. Jack the Ripper, no chance. But what about your granny? What about you? What about some other good person you know? You say, well, yes, they're, they're above the line. Well, what line? 50% good? Makes it to heaven? 80% good? 90% good? Very few of us would have the temerity to say, I'm 90% good. I certainly wouldn't. I'd stand before you and say, I'm a sinner. There is no sin of which I'm not capable, even though I claim to follow Jesus Christ, because we have this evil inside us as well as good, fighting for supremacy. If I rely on my good works, I'm never sure that I'm saved, because if I backslide, if I forget my faith, if I say I'm not going to be a Christian any longer, I'm going to live for something else, or I change my religion, I lose my assurance. It completely goes. And the Bible says your assurance is not based 
upon good works. Other religions say, yes, it is. You keep praying five times a day, you make your pilgrimage to here, there, or everywhere, and you be a good whatever you like to choose, and there are many, many thousands of religions that you could choose from, you be a good whatever you choose, and you'll make it. And Christianity says, nothing to do with you. It's a gift from God. God has done for you what you couldn't possibly do for yourself. Other religions say, you do for God what will please him, and he'll pat you on the head, and you'll make it, hopefully. But how do you know you've made it? The God of the Bible says, if you want assurance, you've got to be absolutely perfect. Be perfect, said Jesus, just as your heavenly Father is perfect. That's the entrance exam to heaven. 100% good the whole of your life. Tough, isn't it? In fact, you don't have to be a mental giant to work out that you can't make it at that, can you? Nobody can make it. It's like all of us getting into our swimming trunks. Instead of going down to the swimming pool here, we all go off to Land's End. We grease ourselves up and put our goggles on. And we point in the direction of newfound land and we start swimming. I would be the first one that would die after about 25 yards. Some of you would get a mile because you're really good swimmers. Others might even get 25, 30, 40, 50, 100 miles, maybe even more than that. You might even get 1,000 miles. I don't know if you're a very good swimmer, but you're not going to get across there. It's impossible. And that's like saying, I'm going to do good works to get to heaven. It's absolutely impossible. So what you're actually saying to God is, I'm not 100% perfect, so will you please approve of the bad stuff that I do as well as the good stuff? I'm 90% good, but I'm 10% bad. Or I'm 50% good, but I'm 50% bad. Can you approve of that as well as my good works? And a holy God says, no, I can't. 100% is my pass mark. If you fail on that, you don't make it. So our God isn't a God who grades. Some of you here are teachers. You grade people. And if they get 50%, you're very pleased because you think, well, maybe they were listening in my classes. But God doesn't grade on a curve and say, you know, those beyond that are past, and those get a, a grade that's not even classified, like many of us get for our exams. God doesn't grade like that. It's not an exam. It's, are you perfect or not? And all of us can say, well, none of us is perfect. We use it often as an excuse. It's a statement of fact, and God says, what are you going to do about it? And we said there's nothing we can do about it. The way of salvation on our own is absolutely impossible. You can't make it. You need someone else to make you as holy as you need to be to go to, the, to heaven because you can't follow any of the alternatives in the world and make it. There's not a perfect Muslim. There's not a perfect Buddhist. There's not a perfect Jew. There's not a perfect Christian. And none of us here would say, I'm perfect. Of course we're not. And God says, if you want to make it, you've got to be perfect. So God comes in with this wonderful word, grace. Sometimes abbreviated to God's riches at Christ's expense. That's why the cross features in the center of the Christian faith. Take out Christ and the cross and Christianity means nothing. Take out some of the other leaders in other religions and you can just carry on doing the things because you're doing good works. But take away Christ and we've got no hope of salvation because our good works are no good to us. It's not by works of righteousness, but God's mercy, God's grace that saves us. In other words, it's a gift. Very simple. And people say, it can't be like that. But I've explained to you, you can't make it on your own. Your only hope is to have a gift. The gift of having all your sins removed. The gift of having someone die in your place on the cross. And that's exactly what God has done. He's made it possible for us to receive Christ, to have eternal life, to know we're going on to heaven. And then, of course, real Christians say, God has been so wonderful to me. He doesn't grade my mistakes and, and make me fail on that score. He's given me his grace. He's given me the gift of God, which is eternal life, and I want to serve him now. And that's exactly what we do. We worship and serve because we love God. See, the Bible says quite clearly... Sin has a penalty, and that penalty is death. Adam and Eve died, everybody else since has died, apart from the Lord Jesus and one or two other people in the Bible. Penalty of sin is what we've got to get over. 
and there's no way we can pay that penalty. It's too much for us to pay, far too much. Some of us went skiing today. I went skiing about 18 years ago on snow and uh, I broke my leg. The ski went quick round like that and so did my foot and I stood up with the aid of other people and I could have walked backwards for Christmas or forwards for somewhere else. It didn't really matter, I was facing both ways at the time because my leg was right the way around, broken. Now, it's possible, I suppose, I could have put that right myself, but being a coward, I didn't. I let the doctor go and put it back. And I couldn't have anaesthetic because I'd had my dinner, but I, it was lovely to see it back right. But if I had a problem in my brain, there's no way, even if I was a brain surgeon, I could perform that surgery. It's just the same with salvation. There's no way we can do it ourselves. We need someone else to put us right. I wanted that doctor to get hold of my leg and put it back right. And it looked lovely to see two feet standing in the right direction instead of one round like that. It was beautiful to see. And that's exactly what the word religion means. It means to bind back to God. And when they put my leg right and they put the plaster on, it was bound back in the right way. And eventually, after about 10 weeks, I could walk on it again. Beautiful. God says... You can't possibly pay the price for your salvation, but it's been paid. You walked into the ski slope today and you didn't pay anything. Not then, anyway, because it's already been paid. You paid it here. If somebody gives you a gift of a meal or something like that, you don't go up afterwards and want to pay for it. It's silly. You can't do that. You might give a tip to somebody or you might try to pay, but you can't really pay for something twice. And you certainly can't pay for salvation. It's too expensive. And God says to us, my son, the Lord Jesus, by his grace, offers you salvation. Not by works of righteousness, not by good works, but by God's grace. There's the choice. Other religions and Christianity. Christianity stands completely alone in saying, it's not good works, it's God's grace.